Welcome to the channel. You're with Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia, speaking on the subject, Denial, Mental Forfeit. Now this one's going to be solid, viewers. I want you to listen and listen very carefully. Denial, Mental Forfeit. It's like when there's a footy game or a baseball game or a sporting event and one of the teams have to forfeit. Um, not enough have turned up or something's gone wrong. Mark chapter 3 verse 1. The Lord Jesus Christ went into the synagogue. Now viewers, the synagogue was supposed to be a place uh, where people got with God and, and got into his presence and were taught about God and the good things of life were supposed to be a part of that. But under the Mosaic law it didn't always work out that way unfortunately. The, a lot of hypocrisy and things like this was born through that and we find out more about this through Romans chapter 7 where the Apostle Paul shares with us that by thinking there's things we can do or not do to make God happy or stop him from being sad it actually works against our ourselves and incites and arouses and gives advantage to our carnal sinful nature so sometimes it's the way in which we approach the places of worship. It's a way in which we approach the things that we're doing to ourselves to think that we're going to improve. And again, um, Jesus went into the synagogue and noticed a person with a deformed hand. Now, there's a lot of us getting around in the masses and in the minorities with ailments that we're hiding from the people that are important to us. And worse than that, we're hiding things from ourselves, things that we know that we could improve on to help ourselves to be healthier in mind and body. And this becomes a habit. We go into a personal mental forfeit. We begin to turn up as a forfeit to ourselves. We're harming ourselves mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. And when we harm ourselves and forfeit to ourselves, we harm and forfeit the people around us. And if we've got influence over those people, then we're teaching them to forfeit and harm themselves and be negligent and not turn up, not turn up the way that we should. Now, our sinful nature has a way of deceiving us. It looks for the easy way out in life. It wants to find the easy way out. And Jesus noticed a man in the synagogue with a deformed hand. Now, all of us, one way or another, let's be honest, we have mental deformities, we have emotional wounds and scars, deformities, we've got spiritual deformities, we're upset with God and Christ and all the things that come with that. The one person we can't get upset with is the Holy Spirit. We've got no right to be upset with the Holy Spirit because... He, if you really get to know him, only does good. And I understand people being angry with God and blaming Jesus for this and that and all the rest of it. That We've all got questions we want to ask. But in this instance, in this situation here, all the religious people were there, but Jesus, Jesus noticed a man with a deformed hand. And this talks about, guys, viewers, ladies and gentlemen, what are we doing with our hands? What are we bringing to ourselves with our hands? Are we using our hands to benefit ourselves, our health, our mind, the way we see, the things that we do? Your hands are the instruments of collection. Your hands are the instruments of productivity. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 19 and verse 24. A lazy person buries their hand in the bowl and will no, not so much bring it back to his mouth. <clears throat> so lazy people have the capabilities of doing everything that a active person can do, but they put their hand in the bowl and are too lazy to bring it back to their mouth. We have the same capacity mentally viewers we do the same thing to ourselves mentally we know what we're supposed to do it comes into 
we pick it up in our mind. We know what we're supposed to do. Our conscience is speaking to us and we forfeit. We forfeit. And there's no excuse for this kind of personal dialect, this personal denial that we're bringing upon ourselves to justify the harm and the negligence and the forfeiting that we're bringing on ourselves. This is the downfall of the masses today. But let's forget about the masses for a minute and just concentrate on ourselves. It all starts and ends with ourselves. It's just how it is. So you're sitting there with your deformed hand or your deformed mind and emotions and spirit and Jesus notices you. Okay? He's noticed what's going on. You know that he knows what's going on. How long are you going to forfeit for before you allow yourself to be availed to a better, richer life where healing comes into you through the Holy Spirit or through therapists or whatever it takes, medications, as the beginning steps towards recovery? Are you going to reach out your hand? You've got your hand in the bowl, right? It's all there. You've got your hand and your mind and your emotions in the bowl of healing and restoration and your recovery and that. You know what you need to do. You've, you've looked at it and you've thought about it. Time's ticking away. Are you going to bring your hand out of the bowl and allow yourself to be healed? This is the, or are you just going to forfeit in denial? Since it was the Sabbath, Jesus' enemies watched him closely. Now, I just want to say, viewers, listen to me. There's people that don't want you to be healed, right? And there's people that do want you to be made whole and do want you to have your best life now. Don't deny yourself. Don't forfeit. Know who your enemies are. It could be people in your family. It could be the people closest to you. Um, I know I've had women where their stepmothers have just been absolute atrocious. It's the stories I've heard about some of these stepmothers towards these people that their fathers have ended up with have been horrible, horrible, just stealing from the father neglecting the children and giving favoritism to their children partiality and all this evil and they've just had to watch their father being taken for granted but what about the man why didn't he step up for his children i hate partiality i remember when i was young my cousin he had a stepmother and there was just something not right about it i was frightened of the woman um if I stayed overnight and I needed to go to the toilet to, to urinate or something, I was too frightened to ask. And it was really confusing. It was really troubling. Now, she might have been a nice woman, but there was a spirit there that frightened the hell out of me. <clears throat> and we all have enemies. Now, you could be... you could Look, the enemy starts within ourselves, okay? Our sinful nature doesn't want us to be healed. It wants us to have a withered, withered emotions and spirit and, and, and relationships. It wants us to have deformed mentality, deformed emotions and deformed heart and mind and thinking. These enemies are real. They're on us every day. They're coming from the in, they're Trojan. They come from the inside out and we're surrounded by them as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please, viewers, subscribers, listeners, you need to wake up to the real-life principalities and powers that work outside you through people, usually the closest ones to you, siphoning the life out of you, programming you to what they want, um, manipulating and trying to control you into their agendas, siphoning your finances, making you run after them like you owe them something. You might even think you owe them something. That's deformed. That's a deformed mind. You're forfeiting reality. You're in denial to what's best for you. Okay? Now, your enemies, who are probably the people closest to you, they're going to watch. They're going to watch 
right? And see if you're going to attempt to bring healing to people. And they will accuse you. Now, I've had a lot of this from um, the women that I have had for partners post-marriage with their children. You might not think they're watching. You might not think they've got deformed thinking. <clears throat> but as you bring their mother, your partner, into a place of healing, you're starting to unravel their mind, their thinking. They're coming away from their self-abuses. They're not forfeiting themselves anymore, running after and disenabling people that are perfectly fine to look after themselves. They are planning to accuse you. Now, you, some of you people are experiencing this. You're being accused, right? You have this sense that you're in trouble even though you've done nothing. That's your spirit telling you that somebody out there is accusing you. They are working on you in the spirit behind your back. They're backbiting you. They're tattletailing on you. They're making stories up, up, up about you. They're watching. They're planning. And they're going to accuse you. I've had this happen. I've had this happen so many times through the spirit of covert emotional incest um, that it's not funny. And it's desecrated and demolished and destroyed perfectly good relationships of which I haven't even argued with these people. These infiltrators, these people that don't want to heal, they've got their hand in the bowl of healing and everything they could ever need in life and they don't want it. They will watch. Right? They will plan. Right? They will have enmity towards you and they will start to accuse you and stop you from bringing the healing that usually their mother needs. And it can be the mother working against her children as well. There's all different combinations and incremental approaches in which them, this can work. But you have to be aware of it. You really do. You have to open up your mind a little bit to the dark side of the people around you, the enmity that they have. See, excuse me, Bill, let me tell you something. There's a lot of people that don't want you to be free. They don't want you to be well. They don't want to be left behind and watch you make the effort to get better because they're comfortable with where they are. Our sinful nature wants us to be recluse. It wants us to hide away from healing, from happiness, from joy. It wants us to recluse us and forfeit us and paralyze us into the things that are harming us. And we're trying to juggle relationships and everything with this self-forfeit. People sense people that forfeit and it aggravates them when you're trying to move forward and you're making the effort to have a good, healthy life and you're being accused, and people are planning and plotting against you, and you're watching your partner, and you're, you're seeing them get well, and then all of a sudden they turn up, and they are smashed. And you look, and, and you're not saying anything, you're going, what on earth are we mirroring? You see, we all mirror something. We all mirror what we're involved in. If you're involved in alcohol, you will be the mirror of the alcohol. If you're involved in medication, you'll mirror what the medication's doing to you. Weed, you'll mirror that. Nicotine, whatever it is, you'll mirror the effects of that through you. People will see you in their mirror. And that's disappointing when everything's going good and then all of a sudden somebody's just wrecked. It can be shocking. It can be, it can be devastating because so much good's happening. Why, where, who? I'll tell you what it is. Viewers, please listen to me. It's the influences of the people from within. It's the Trojan influences from within. <clears throat> These people are the enemies of the ways of Christ and they watch closely to see who's getting better and who's not and they will plan and plot and accuse and stop you from healing they don't want you to get better 
Do you want to get better? Your sinful nature doesn't want you to get better. But it's time. The sand in the hourglass is running out. Honestly, it's time for you to stop and go, gee, you know, my health's deteriorating. My mind's getting... I've got this mind... My thoughts aren't my thoughts. I've lost my relationship. My health's going down the hill. These people, they, they keep leeching off me. They're not listening to me. Is this what I've created around me? Viewers, please, in the name of Jesus, I release the Holy Spirit right now into your presence. You can't get angry at the Holy Spirit. He's done no one any wrong. And he will work in you. He will just work away at you, minding his own business. And you will come to that point where you're confronted with your withered hand, right? Your deformed hand, and you'll go, I don't want this deformed mind anymore. I don't want this deformed life anymore. I am micro-incrementally going to take the steps with the spirit that's working in me, my consciousness that I need to get better. I'm going to micro-incrementally, bit by bit, I'm going to work my way out of this. And some of you have done this before and you know how to do it. And I'm going to come back to myself and I'm going to restore my life. And I'm going to build a strong, healthy relationship with somebody. And I'm going to build a strong, healthy relationship with the people around me. But I'm going to have boundaries and I'm going to have myself as well as I can be. And if they want to follow, follow. And if they want to stay with their withered hand and their withered lives, that's not my problem. Viewers, it's time for you as an individual person <clears throat> sitting there with your withered life from drugs, alcohol, sadness, just being leached off people, making yourself just a, a, a whirlpool of, of that equals nothing and goes nowhere. You're just spiraling down all the time. You've got no money. Your money's been wasted. Um, your health's been wasted. You're full of grudges, resentment. You're taking the wrong advice. You're being influenced by the wrong people. You're ending up with nothing. You're losing your relationships, good relationships. You're all on your own. Maybe that suits you. That's your bad luck if it is. It doesn't have to be this way. You have enemies. They're planning against you. They're, they're accusing you. You can't see this. This is all passive-aggressive, covert, psychological, spiritual attacks on your mind and life which are bringing you down. They're pulling you down. They're deforming your thinking. They're deforming your spirit. They're ruining your body. It's time to come and stand in front of everybody. Come and stand in front of everybody, deformed, and listen, and stand up for yourself and say, No more! This is Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, theologist. We'll continue this in our next talk. Bye for now.